Chapter 10 Years passed. The seasons came and went. The short animal lives rushed by. Few now remembered the old days before the rebellion. Muriel, Bluebell, Jessie, Jones and Pincher were all dead. Snowball was forgotten. Even Boxer was only remembered by the few who had known him. Clover was two years past the retiring age. But no animal had ever actually retired. Napoleon was now enormous. Squealer was so fat that he could only with difficulty see out of his eyes. Only old Benjamin was much the same, except since Boxer's death, more morose and taciturn than ever. There were more creatures on the farm now. The younger animals accepted everything that they were told about the rebellion and animalism without understanding very much of it. The windmill had been successfully completed at last. It was used for milling corn, not generating electrical power, and brought in a handsome profit. Talk of luxuries like stalls with electric lights or a three-day week was now officially prohibited. Such ideas are contrary to the spirit of animalism, Napoleon announced. The farm had grown richer without making the animals themselves any richer. Except, of course, for the pigs and the dogs. They did not produce any food, but there were very many of them, and they ate well. The other animals were generally hungry. They slept on straw and drank from the pool. They laboured in the fields. In winter they were cold. In summer there were flies to deal with. Sometimes the older ones amongst them thought about the early days of the rebellion. Were things better or worse now? They could not remember. Squealer's lists of figures demonstrated that everything was getting better and better. Only old Benjamin remembered every detail of his long life. Things have always been terrible, he said, and they always will be. The pigs disappear to a secluded area of the farm for special training. One evening, the other animals are returning from the fields when they witness an astonishing transformation. Startled, the animals stopped in their tracks. A pig was walking on his hind legs. Squealer was strolling, a little awkwardly, across the yard. A moment later, more pigs came out from the door of the farmhouse. They were all walking on their hind legs. Finally, there was a tremendous baying of dogs. Out came Napoleon himself, majestically upright, casting haughty glances from side to side. The dogs danced round him. He carried a whip in his trotter. Huddling together, the animals watched the long line of pigs marched slowly round the yard. Just at that moment, all the sheep burst out into a tremendous bleating. Four legs good! Two legs better! It went on for five minutes without stopping. By then, the pigs had marched back into the farmhouse. Benjamin felt a nose nuzzling at his shoulder. He looked round. It was Clover. Without saying anything, she led him round to the end of the big barn, 
where the seven commandments were written. For a minute or two, they stood gazing at the wall with its white lettering. My sight is failing, she said finally. But that wall looks different. Are the commandments the same as they used to be, Benjamin? Benjamin read out to her what was written on the wall. There was now just a single commandment. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. After that, it did not seem strange when the next day the pigs carried whips in their trotters. It did not seem strange to learn that the pigs were arranging to install a telephone. Or when Napoleon was seen strolling around with a pipe in his mouth, wearing Mr Jones's black coat and leather leggings. Benjamin felt a nose nuzzling at his shoulder. He looked round. It was Clover. Without saying anything, she led him round to the end of the big barn where the seven commandments were written. For a minute or two, they stood gazing at the wall. My sight is failing, she said finally. But that wall looks different. Are the commandments the same as they used to be, Benjamin? Benjamin read out to her what was written on the wall. There was now just a single commandment. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. After that, it did not seem strange when the next day the pigs carried whips in their trotters. It did not seem strange to learn that the pigs were arranging to install a telephone. Or when Napoleon was seen strolling around with a pipe in his mouth, wearing Mr Jones's black coat and leather leggings. One evening, human guests arrived from Foxwood Farm. Soon, loud laughter and bursts of singing came from the farmhouse. Clover led the animals into the farmhouse garden and they tiptoed up to the house. Those that were tall enough peered in at the dining room window. Around the long table sat the farmers and the pigs. A game of cards had paused in order to drink a toast. A large jug of beer was circulating. Mr Pilkington stood up, his mug in his hand. Gentlemen, I give you a toast, he said, to the prosperity of Animal Farm. There was enthusiastic cheering and stamping of feet. Napoleon left his place and came round the table to clink his mug against Mr Pilkington's before emptying it. When the cheering had died down, Napoleon spoke. I have an announcement, he said. From today, this farm will be again known as the Manor Farm. Gentlemen, here is my toast to the prosperity of the Manor Farm. As the animals outside gazed at the scene, it seemed to them that some strange thing was happening. What was it that had altered in the faces of the pigs? Clover's old dim eyes flitted from one face to another. Some of them had five chins, some had four, some had three. But what was it that seemed to be melting and changing? The applause came to an end. The card game that had been interrupted restarted. The animals began creeping silently away. Suddenly, the sound of loud voices came from the farmhouse. They rushed back and looked through the window again. A violent quarrel was in progress. The trouble appeared to be that Napoleon and Mr Pilkinson 
had each played an ace of spades simultaneously. Twelve voices were shouting in anger, and they were all alike. The creatures outside looked from pig to man, and from man to pig, and from pig to man again, but already it was impossible to say which was which. <laughs>